happy holidays everyone. I'm here in my kitchen uh, baking as usual at this time of year. My kitchen kind of turns into a little cookie factory of sorts, but um, there's one cookie that everybody loves the most, everybody wants the recipe for, everybody wants to know how to make it, and it's not so much um, how to make it, but the technique um, that is involved with these very simple cookies. So I want to show you that. These are called pignoli cookies, and the word pignoli in Italian means pine nuts. And so the end result is like this. These are cookies made with almond paste, so they're chewy and soft on the inside, and they've got lovely toasted pine nuts on the outside, and they are addictive, and everybody loves them. I will tell you that we have five ingredients to these cookies. Uh, this batch will make you about 45 cookies, so uh, three trays of 15, about 45 cookies. So you have four egg whites, two cups of granulated sugar, some pine nuts, untoasted raw pine nuts. You can find these at Whole Foods, Sprouts. You can find them uh, even online. Most importantly, the main ingredient, the star of the show, is almond paste. Um, very quickly, I'll tell you, you cannot substitute almond flour or anything else for these cookies. They require almond paste. I buy it in bulk. You can also buy it in the grocery store in little eight ounce tubes. This is what one pound of almond paste looks like. And that's exactly what I need to make one batch of these cookies. And almond paste, as you can see, is very pliable. I like to think of uh, Play-Doh as a good uh, uh, explanation for what it's like. And uh, that's what gives them that very distinct flavor and chewy texture. So that's why you can't really substitute anything. So I'm gonna very, very quickly show you how quickly the dough for these comes together. And most importantly, I'm gonna show you how to form them and get them baked off. So here in my Cuisinart food processor, I am going to take my one pound of Play-Doh <laughs> almond paste and just break it up into chunks like I'm doing here. And you can put it all in at once, it'll be fine. You do need a food processor to, for this, um, so uh, most people have one. Uh, two cups of granulated sugar, just dump it all in. Put the lid on, and what we're going to do is just run this very, very quickly, maybe about 30 seconds. And there you have it. What you're looking for is this consistency that looks like wet sand, basically so that all the big chunks has been incorporated into the sugar and that is ready to go. Over here in our stand mixer, and you can use a handheld mixer to do this as well, we are going to put our four egg whites all the way in there. Um, room temperature eggs is always better than cold, if you can. And uh, my fifth ingredient is a teaspoon of almond extract, just to accentuate that almond flavor. If you don't have almond extract, that is the one thing you could probably leave out and be okay. All right, we're gonna lock this up. So I have my four egg whites in here, and I am going to whip them up to soft peaks, which should take just less than a minute. Okay, here we go. Jeopardy when I'm waiting for something to get done. <laughs> soft peaks. Here we have soft peaks. Um, I'm going to add in my little teaspoon of almond extract. And now, very simply, I'm going to get my sand. I'm going to call it sand and turn it back on low and start mixing these two components together. Okay, so now I'm just putting the rest of my almond paste and sugar mixture in with our egg whites and making sure that that gets all well incorporated. 
All right, I'm just turning this off for a second because I just want to scrape down the sides a little bit just to make sure that everything gets mixed really well. And I'll turn it back on for just another few seconds to make sure everything is well incorporated. So we are done and I want to show you, first of all, that this is a very wet and sticky dough. And that's why it's important to show you the technique for how you get these to come together because I've tried piping this dough, which is fine. You can put it in a piping bag and pipe the cookies, but then um, it's just as much time to sprinkle the pine nuts on each cookie rather than what I'm gonna show you. So, you know, whatever works for you, but I'm gonna show you, I've been making these cookies for 30 years and um, it, it, I've, learned as I've gone um, ways to perfect it, the, the recipe and also the technique, more importantly, the technique. So here is our pignoli cookie dough. And as you can see, it's pretty wet and sticky. So one of the things that I do, which really is helpful, is to put this just the way it is in the refrigerator for half an hour or an hour before you start baking the cookies, okay? I'm not gonna do it right now because I'm gonna show you how to shape them, but the dough gets a little firmer and a little bit easier to handle. Okay, so what I have here is a cookie sheet that I have lined with foil and very lightly sprayed with cooking spray. And this is very important because the dough is sticky, the cookies will stick, and this is the best method that I have found to get them not to stick. So. I've got my pignoli nuts um, in a shallow dish. I have a little bowl of cold water because you will periodically need to rinse your hands or dip your hands in the water to keep your hand, the cookie from sticking to your hands, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna take about a walnut-sized piece of dough in my hand and I'm going to Pull it off the spoon, shape it into a ball, and as you can see, it doesn't stick to my hands when my hands are wet. I'm gonna plop it into the pine nuts, and I'm gonna try to do this without it rolling in the pine nuts. If it does, don't worry about it. You're just gonna use more pine nuts. So pine nuts are kind of pricey, I'm not gonna lie, so you want to um, be judicious with your pine nuts. But as you can see, I um, touch it very minimally, okay? So here I'm going in for another. I'm gonna slip it off at the end of the spoon, shape it into a ball, and let it fall in the pine nuts. And, and when you pick it up with your hands, you can see the pine nuts don't stick to your hands, so you can easily flip it onto the cookie sheet. But that's about what you're looking for. Okay, I am down to my last cookie on this sheet. And two very important things. Uh, these are gonna cook in a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes or so, depending on how hot your oven gets. You want the middle of the cookie to still be sort of white, and you want the edge to be just a little bit golden. And I'll show you that when you it's chewy and soft in the middle, mm, crunchy on the outside, so, so, so good. The other more important thing is that when you take them out of the oven, you can slide the foil off of the cookie sheet and let them cool, but make sure they are completely cool before you pull them off of the foil or your middle will stick to the foil regardless. So that's really important. So I'm gonna bake these off, I'm gonna start another tray. And um, I can tell you that these are absolutely Christmas in our house. It wouldn't be Christmas without these cookies. So with that, I wanna wish you all happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, please stay safe and well, and uh, see you next time.